a trip to West Yorkshire to visit the Steam Workshop and Blackgates Engineering. I live in East Yorkshire, which is 50 miles from West Yorkshire, but it was worth the trip. This video is a bit back to front, because I did this when I got back from West Yorkshire. This fairly horrible piece of metal on the picnic table outside the workshop is the steering mechanism for my long passenger truck for the traction engine. I needed Mark at the Steam Workshop to re-weld it and make it strong, and also make me this, which will allow me to connect the passenger truck to my driving truck. I picked up the piece of quarter of an inch by one inch steel bar from Blackgates Engineering on the way there. I intend to use my passenger truck for carrying extra water, not all the time, just sometimes, but the state of the welding on the original steering mechanism for the truck just wasn't strong enough. 60 litres of water in three plastic containers is very heavy, and that's without any passengers sitting on the truck. Hopefully it should be okay now. On the way to the steam workshop, I also needed to call into Blackgates Engineering to pick these up, two Rylang oil cans. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, you will know that I already have two oil cans identical to these. The other two I've had for a really long time, they've never let me down, they're brilliant things. But now I need a couple of them to be sat with the traction engine at all times. I don't want to risk forgetting my oil cans if I take the traction engine out on the road. But also, I'm finding that as the traction engine lives in the garage, I keep having to go down there to collect the oil cans to use in the workshop, hence the reason to buy a couple more. The large one is for steam oil and the small one is for lubricating oil. It may appear illogical because it would be a better idea to put lubricating oil that I use more of in the large one, but the smaller one is much easier to get into the places where I need to lubricate the moving parts. In this clip, I'm first of all adding some British cold-pressed rapeseed oil. I'm adding this only to the lubricating oil, not to the steam oil. Rapeseed oil is a friction reducer. At one time, I used to make my own oil mixture using 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil. But after a visit to Bancroft Mill in Ban Oldswick in the UK, after speaking to the engineer in charge of the engine, I decided to follow his advice and use this stuff. This is a can of steam cylinder oil. I also have a can of lubricating oil, and believe me, it's really good stuff. It's the stuff to use. The steam oil is much thicker than the lubricating oil. I'm using a funnel, and as you can see, the oil is in no rush to go into the can. At ambient temperature, this stuff is very viscous. It's less viscous, though, when it's in the steam cylinder. And once again, I reiterate, do not add rapeseed oil to the steam oil. I don't know how it would perform with the high temperatures found inside a steam cylinder, but it's really good to add to general purpose lubricating oil. Back to the trip to West Yorkshire. I made my way to the steam workshop, and the first thing I needed to do was use one of the lathes in there. I could have done this in my workshop, but it's much better doing it on this lathe. This is a Harrison M300 model and it really is so much better than my old Boxford, I can't begin to tell you how much better it is. I really would like one of these in my workshop, but then again, how many beginners have these in their workshops, and that's why I stick with the old Boxford. I need to keep my tutorials realistic. I was making a part for Mark to weld onto a piece of steel bar, which is quarter of an inch thick by one inch wide. And here's the completed assembly on my picnic table after a coat of etch primer. I worked at the steam workshop for a while. And during the time I was working at the steam workshop, amongst other things, the amazing Mr. John Holroyd was working on a seven and a quarter inch gauge Duke of Gloucester locomotive. Here's a video clip from 2018 showing work in progress on that day. This is the Duke of Gloucester, which is a seven and a quarter inch gauge Pacific locomotive. That means it has a 462 wheel arrangement, and at the moment it's sat on a stand with the boiler roughly in place. This is just a loose test fit to make sure that the boiler fits into the smoke box and everything fits on the frames, and indeed it does. And it's absolutely beautifully made. This is the dome cover that fits on top of the boiler. I don't know who made this, whether it was John or Graham. But once again, the engineering standard of this small yet significant part is very good indeed. The boiler wasn't made in-house, but whoever made it really knew how to do this sort of thing. 
This is boiler smithing taken to the next level. And here's the same engine two years down the line. The more I look at this, the more it makes me feel ill. The standard and amount of work on this is just jaw-dropping. I would recommend that once you've watched this particular part of the video, rewind it and have another look. There's just so much more detail on there now. The engine is still far from finished, and by viewing the images, I'm sure you get the general idea. This is model engineering taken to the next level. That's enough of that, time to go back to reality. Elsewhere in the steam workshop are various locomotives in different stages of construction or repair. And outside in the yard, Mark is working all by himself on these. An entire train, and it's big. Here are the wheels for it, ten and a quarter inch gauge. Just inside the door is the test boiler. This is a live steam test boiler for testing injectors and things like that. And like everything that I see at the steam workshop that's been built in-house, it's really beautiful. And while on the subject of beautiful, take a look at this. The woodwork alone is stunning. And once again, all of the woodwork was done by Mark, another man at the steam workshop with great skill. In another part of the steam workshop are these two, a steam lorry and a small traction engine. And a most unusual 7.25 inch gauge locomotive. The small traction engine that I've just mentioned is actually a 4 inch scale traction engine, beautifully made. The steering is very free, quite unlike the traction engine I have, but then I looked at the size of the gear wheel, and it's much larger than the one on my traction engine. You can't have everything. I like this one though, this is a very unusual locomotive on one of the shelves. And here are three more. There's so much eye candy in this place, I find it hard to keep my head still. As I stand here with the video camera, there are miniature steam locomotives almost all the way around me. And for once, here are some non-steam items. Here's a traction engine without any rear wheels. And I think this is a 7.25 inch gauge Rainhill locomotive. And yes, there's more, a lot more than there is on this video. And that's about it for this visit to the steam workshop. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.